Good afternoon, everyone. After a lengthy hiatus, we're back with uh, reflections, midweek reflections. My name is Pastor Tim, Pastor of Christ Lutheran Church in Bexley, Ohio. Um, and I wanted to, to share with you something that's been on my heart a little bit and, and do that by asking a question. Uh, of you have you ever have you ever been overwhelmed by sin have you ever been overwhelmed by your sinfulness it might be an individual sin it might be just a, a bunch of sin or sinfulness in general uh, but have you ever been overwhelmed by that and I, I think the answer to that question for all of us me included me especially is yes yes we have been overwhelmed at some point in our lives by our sinfulness. And I immediately think of David, King David, the Old Testament king, king of um, Israel, and his, his uh, affair with Bathsheba. You remember that story. He goes out on his patio roof one day, looks down on, on Jerusalem in front of him, and he sees a gal sunbathing uh, on a patio roof uh, just down from his place, his palace, and he uh, falls immediately in infatuation with her and says, I have to have her, and calls her in um, uh, to the palace, and he finds out more about her, finds out she's the wife of his general, one of his generals, uh, Uriah, and so he begins to plot how he can get he can get Bathsheba, and he ends up uh, sending Uriah off to battle in the front lines, and, uh, and Uriah is killed. Uh, that's what David had hoped along the way, so he takes Bathsheba, his wife. And there are a lot more details to that story, and I would commend it to you to reread that and, and find out more about it, but suffice it to say that David had done a terrible thing, uh, murder, adultery, premeditated, he planned it out, and everything. And he thought he had gotten away with it. He thought he had gotten away with it. And then the prophet Nathan came to Daniel. Uh, God let Nathan know what had happened and, and asked Nathan, Nathan to uh, confront David with it. And David had nowhere to go with that. He knew he had been caught and he was overwhelmed by his sin. And as a result of that, he wrote Psalm 51. And I'd just like to share portions of that with you. This was David's response. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. That's that overwhelming piece, right? Our sin is ever before us. We chew on it, we dwell on it, we regret it. And that's where he is here in this moment. Against you, Lord, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. He's saying that God said, God is, has every right to condemn David. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. The idea of original sin, you know, we, we kind of can't help it. That's who we are. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean, David says. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. Blot out all my iniquities. Create me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. For you will not delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. There's a running theme in here, and obviously David is overwhelmed by his guilt, by his sinfulness, and not, and not just 
in this episode, but he's looking at his whole life too. And he's calling for God to cleanse him, which means David feels dirty. That's the image that is portrayed here. David simply feels dirty. Inside, outside, spiritually especially, he is dirty. And he calls forth to God uh, for God's generous and abundant mercy to cleanse him. And a couple times you hear the phrase, purge me with hyssop, I will be clean. Wash me, I shall be whiter than snow. He uses the term wash me a couple of times. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Just wipe away the sin that I have committed. And, and certainly this is about, uh, this is about confession this is about repentance. And you know what? God is faithful to him. God does that. God cleanses his, his sin, cleanses him from the sin. And, and God would say later that David was always a man after my own heart, which is a pretty profound thing when you look at what David had done here in this moment. So being overwhelmed by sin, uh, we can... We can uh, experience that certainly and even the apostle paul is is false to that if we go to romans chapter 7 paul says for we know that the law is spiritual he's talking about the ten commandments and the law but i am of the flesh sold under sin for i do not understand my own actions for i do not do what i want but i do the very thing that i hate now if i do what i do not want i agree with the law that it is good so now it's no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God. In other words, he wants to do what God wants him to do. But I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, Paul says, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus delivers him and forgives him of all the sin that overwhelms him. And not, not just sin that he doesn't do again, but sins that, you know, he keeps, he keeps falling in that same trap over and over again. And he's frustrated with himself. He knows, he knows how he should be living in the light of God's love but sometimes just is not successful at it. So there are occasions when Paul too is overwhelmed by sin. But here's the thing, brothers and sisters, that God in Christ Jesus has taken away all those sins as we confess those sins to him, as, as we hold on to him in faith and trust. He cleanses us from all sin. He cleanses us from all sin and brings us into his righteousness so that when God looks at us, he doesn't see us maybe the way we see ourselves, but he sees us. Uh, he sees Jesus in us. He sees the sacrifice that Christ made uh, on our behalf. Jesus, the God in flesh and blood, the Word made flesh, and dwelling among us. I'd like to close with one other passage. It's Isaiah chapter 55. And in this passage, just a beautiful passage, God shows a com his compassion for us. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he has no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. David. So the call to us is to seek him, 
And as we seek him and, and give our hearts and, and lives to him, as we seek his forgiveness and mercy, we are cleansed. We are made new and we are brushed off, picked up off the ground that, uh, where we've fallen and, and, and prodded to move ahead in, in our life and in our faith. You are given a clean slate in Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God for that. God's richest blessings be yours this day and every day. May God use you to be a blessing as well. See you next time.